I've been wanting to do this for a while, but at the same time, I said, I'm going to write it down, and then I don't have a chance to write it down, or it's too long to write down, and I decided to do this because this was the hardest decision and transition we ever faced, and this was in the year 2016, and here's my raw emotion. I'm not specific, but you can tell I was hurt. We have been going through a process that is so unbelievable that I sometimes, um, I don't understand it, but I, it's not for me to understand, but to know that God is in control and he is in the midst of all of this. And all I have to do is just be obedient and follow him. And I'm always reminded of the story of Abraham when God called him out of his comfort of his family and some of his family, um, some of his friends, the city he was in, everything he knew called him out of there and just asked him to trust God. He didn't know where he was going or what he was about to do, but he believed God. He trusted God and he has so much faith in God that he just went blindly. That I mean, that's the only way I could describe it. He went blindly to a land he had no idea where he was going then I think of Moses I mean we we listen to these stories thousands of times and you know sometimes it doesn't affect us or we don't find it to be so oh wow it's not until you go through a situation when you go and read your word and you start relating yourself to these men of God and you say whoa if this was to happen now I don't know if I would be able to do that I mean Moses went back to tell a king a king that's like going to the president of the United States and telling him let my people go I mean uh, just imagine that and he did and he saved his people he took them out of there and they embarked on this journey that he had no idea what they were going to do and look at these men of God and how they are now and how we read about them and how we could learn so much from them um the process that we're in right now was we do not entertain we don't know how to entertain um, all we know how to do is just give word, and that's what we stuck to. And no matter what kept coming our way for a year, we stuck by what we believed with God in front of us, and He did not allow anyone to step over us to stop us, even though it wanted to happen. We just continued doing what we know how to do. Spiritually, when something you see bothers you, you, I used to tend to just back away and sit. This time I went into my prayer closet and I just prayed and prayed. I started to see people um, a certain way that I was just like, wow, but... They smile in my face. Yet I still loved unconditionally. I still loved no matter how I was being treated or what they used to say. I still loved no matter what. Um, Because at the end of the day, this was about God and not about me. And if this is a way for him to strip me of me. And what I thought about people and um, if my ego needed to be submitted, and he did it. He did it this way and I learned a lot. 
but, um, we went to the front, and <clears throat> she looked at us, and she said, I'm so happy to see you guys, and then the word came, and that was in April, um, and I have to say that out of the amazing moments that God has spoken to us as a couple or individuals, this has been the most um, impactful and hard word to swallow. Because truth was spoken and everything that Chester and I have felt was confirmed at that moment and I think the hardest part was to one thing is to know that people feel a certain way about you and not speaking about it and another thing is when it, it is it is confirmed And then you have to see these people. After that word was spoken over us. And. But I will bring you out with your head up high. And I kept that word in my heart. With my head up high. Because the last thing that I wanted to do. Was leave a church again. And. Be looked at. As a person who. Is jumping again. To another place. And moving again. Because. There was something wrong. Where you were at. And. I had to remember that it was God who was speaking to us at that moment and he was giving us that word and I had to listen to that recording over and over again so I felt okay and at peace with making that decision then came the moment of all right we heard this this happened in April all right, we heard this now. What we're going to do with it? Um, I remember leaving that service with such a heavy heart because you, I, me. That was the first time in my Christian walk that I gave. Without wanting anything back. I gave. Myself. In a way. That I have never done before. I was open. I was transparent. And I guess for that same reason. For being so genuine with that. People. Were either threatened by it. Or just couldn't believe that a person can actually be this way so that word and what was spoken and what God said to us was very very hard why we have never done anything but show love and peace and I was very I gave my all. And I gave my all to people. I, I cry because it just hurts. Um, so then um, we continue to work 
we continued to work. We continued to work. And we prayed about it. We prayed together as a family. We prayed individually. We asked God for confirmation. The confirmation was was coming. Um, but we waited for God to give us a way out. It's very difficult for us to sit down and talk to someone about this situation and what was happening to us and what to do. How can what's the right way to do this but the only one that we can lean on is God he was the one who gave us the word so we just lean on him and we continue to pray one thing about me is when I feel something I'm very in tune with my feelings I want to say that I'm very in tune in tune with the Holy Spirit that allows me to um understand when something is not good or uh, something is good and this pressure that was on us for so many months I mean I'm telling you a pressure that was unbelievable we just felt both of us at peace a sense of relief and this happiness that we were actually walking home with I wanted to just just be free and 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 laugh not in this situation but i can laugh again freely and not feel this this weight that i used to feel all the time so we knew that we did the right thing when we felt that peace um I have learned a valuable lesson out of all of this. Do I serve people or do I serve God? Even though I'm it hurts because it hurts because when you're used to being around certain people every day and people that you know you love and love you like there's silence the silence speaks loud and that's the part that I don't understand that's the part that I hurt about and that's the part that I cry about I just feel very alone. And no, no matter how much I try to make myself useful and uh, approachable or wanting just to bond with somebody, it doesn't happen. And it can't happen that fast. I pour my love out. Now I just, I don't even know what to do anymore with myself. So, like I've been telling God, if this is the season of rest that you're giving Chester and I, amen. I'm just going to sit back, listen, observe, enjoy it, receive, and just wait for your word again to say go. But this is one of the hardest things. The hardest transition that I have gone through personally in this walk with God. But he's been faithful to us. He's been showing us that he is with us. With the little blessings that we see that come in. And... I cannot deny that it's him. So a part of being stripped 
and feeling like a sense of loneliness. It makes Tester and I a lot closer and closer to God. Because that we know that he is in control of all of this. And I don't wish anybody harm. I actually, I don't. I don't, even with the things that I see still. And the, the, it's so silly, right? But these are the things that hurt because these are the people who say that they love you with their words and the unfriend requests and the people who, but no matter how you told them what's going on, still are far away from you. But the two things that hurt me. And I will continue to cry about this. Until I can speak about it without crying. Until I can speak about it with authority. Knowing that. That God himself. Which I know. He wrote this chapter in our lives. And I will continue. To just look at him. Because this has shown me. Where I stand. This has taught me that no matter what chaos is going around me, that it's just God and I. It's just God and I. It's just God and I. No matter what people are saying about us, no matter what is being spread about us, I know that God is in the midst of this. And that's all I care about. And that's all I want to make sure about. That his presence is there with us. And I would not care about anything else. This path. It's not about being comfortable. It's not even about being happy. It's about being holy. It's about being obedient. And it's about trusting God. That wherever he leads you. That you'd be willing to submit to what he wants you to do without questioning him. But just moving forward. This is what this path is about. It's how much you really trust God. Because we say it so much with our mouth. But when it comes to that moment to put it into action. We step back. But no, he needs to trust people. He needs to see who he can trust with this mission. Like I said before, everybody wants a ministry. Everybody wants to be anointed. But when, before it gets to that point, God needs to see that he can trust you. God needs to see you develop a relationship with him in secret first, behind closed doors first, before the manifestation comes into public. Because you could tell when somebody's singing up there, when somebody's preaching up there, you can tell if this person has been in secret with God because that authority and that anointing just flows out of them. And it's not empty words. It's words Fool with God's power. Even if the process hurts, causes you moments of, of solitude, it's okay. Because God has something wonderful for all of us. And then he allowed us to go through these process is because he already saw us come out through it. So we need to be, in a sense... We need to see how God. And the biggest lesson I learned out of all of this. That this is not about us. This is about God. It's not about us. It's not about us. It's not about us. This is all about Him. 
It's all about him. Let go of your egos. Let go of your pride. Let go of your pain. Let go of your suffering. None of that compares to what he did for us. None of that compares to what he did for us. So every single time we feel like we can't take it or we feel suffocated or that we're walking through this desert and there is nothing in sight to relieve us, we just look at that cross and remind ourselves, this doesn't compare to what you went through. And I'm so sorry for thinking that I can compare my situation with yours, God. It's not about us. 